What's going on guys? So we're underneath the Jeep again, doing the flex plate now. That's this thing right here. I get some light on the situation. Uh, it's cracked. It's making all kinds of noises, you know, from the last video. So today we're gonna rip out this transmission, get it ready, because tomorrow it goes down for its furniture services. Um, and we have a four hour drive to go down to get it done. So we gotta get the starter off, we gotta get the power disconnected, get this flex plate unbolted, move the transmission back, and we should have enough space to get this plate off and back on. And uh, I'll vlog along the way. This might not be a very long vlog for this one because this is a pretty involved um, ordeal and also it's, uh, I have to get it done by 10 o'clock tonight in order to have it ready for the road trip tomorrow. So hopefully I'm gonna record as much as I can, but if I forget to, I apologize in advance. Uh, so we'll see you when we get the uh, starter off and get a lot of the bolts and ready to slide back. We'll turn on the camera and hopefully we don't kill ourselves by dropping the transmission on ourselves. So we'll see you shortly. All right, so we got the transmission out. We've got the old flex play out. This is the nightmare of contraption we have set up. Two ratchet straps to take the weight just in case it decides to drop on us. We got the flex plate in the new one. I'll show you a picture of the old one now. Okay, so you can see it's cracked all the way around. It's, it was absolutely done. We don't know how it survived. Um, pretty much, we're just getting this all bolted back up. So tomorrow we can get on the road. So once everything's done, we'll go for a test drive. We'll see how she does. Hey there guys, what's going on? So this is the fourth video kind of me talking. Well, we changed the flex plate on the Jeep. It was supposed to go down yesterday to get the diffs done. Didn't happen. So we turned on the flex plate and it started making ticking and banging noises again. Well, it turns out that the metal's a little bent on the flex plate. So we have to drop the trans again, try to fix the flex plate, and then hopefully we didn't destroy our OEM Jeep crank positioning sensor because they're apparently very hard to find. So for those who don't own Jeep Wranglers, this, this here, that is a crank positioning sensor. Now there is aftermarket ones you can buy. They're about a hundred bucks or you can go on Rock Auto and get it for 60. They're not solid metal and the magnet is a weak. This is OEM. So the magnet is strong in this. So you literally stick it to my fridge, but we, the battery died in our Jeep because someone left the auxiliary on. That was my bad. So, this is how you charge it when you can't find a trickle charger because you just moved. So we've had the Chevy running for two hours, supporting the oil field pipeline since gas is like 40 cents a liter. Why not? I'm just kidding. This thing literally burns maybe two liters of fuel every hour, if that. It's actually not bad at all. So now we're gonna take these chargers off. We're gonna throw them on the ground. There we go. Let's see what this uh, thing has fire left in. Let's put this suction cup right here. I don't know how long this is gonna hold for. Probably not very long at all. Because it's a piece of plastic. Sure. Just, just stay for a minute, GoPro. All right, so let's put our multimeter on this battery. We're gonna go to that. Okay, test our connection. We have zero, good. Okay, positive and negative. What do we got here? So we're back up to 12.6 volts. So that's good. That means that the battery is fully charged and we can get on with our day because I want to listen to music. We'll turn that off, put that back. Um, we can get on with our music and charge. Thank God the alternator in this car has been changed out. We put a more heavy duty one in there. I've always, if you, I've always opted out. If you can put a bigger heavy duty alternator in your vehicle, always do it. Cause you never know if you might need to jumpstart your buddy's pickup truck if you drive a Neon. But we're gonna drop the transmission now. Uh, we did it the other day with the car jacked way up in the air to give us lots of room to work under it. Bad idea. That was a horrible idea. Uh, we don't have a transmission jack, we have a regular jack. And I would recommend if you're gonna do this, get a transmission jack. If you can't get a transmission jack, I would definitely recommend doing this by putting straps around the vehicle. So if the transmission decides to fall, your straps will catch it. Um, that's what we did yesterday. Saved my ass twice. 
Um, that transmission weighs about 800 pounds. So if you think, oh, if it falls, I'm just gonna catch it. You could probably catch the tranny, but that transfer case is what's gonna kill you. Um, so, by the way, can't get a haircut. No one's open yet to get a haircut. So I have the longest hair I've ever had in my life since high school. Um, so pretty much, we're gonna keep it on the ground. I'm gonna get all the bolts undone. We're gonna get the transmission dropped. This time, we're gonna use the jack stand and we're gonna take the exhaust off because I need it fully removed. And then we're gonna reshape the metal on the flex plate. And hopefully um, we didn't screw it up too bad. I don't know how it got bent, but it's making contact with the uh, crank position sensor. I don't know if you guys be able to see that, but uh, I doubt you'd be able to see that. But at the top of it, it's made contact with it. That's the clicking noise we've been hearing, not because it's cracked and it won't turn over. Um, the Jeep will not start. Um, because this is not getting the right information. So the Jeep just turns over and when it does run, it runs like a bag of crap. It, when it backed out fine, but once it started taking out the uh, sensor here and start messing with it, we're hoping we saved it. Um, but it's, it's not looking good. We might have to find an OEM sensor, which is fine. Uh, we got friends who have them. We can buy a used one. Uh, I prefer to have an OEM sensor whenever I can. Like I say in my last video with the Chevy, um, always do OEM parts when it comes to sensors for electronics. You'll save yourself a million headaches. Uh, I, there's been countless times where if you buy something aftermarket, you're gonna replace it in a year or two anyhow. It's not gonna survive. So you always buy OEM because if it survived for 15 to 20 years on OEM, it's gonna survive enough 15, 20 years on OEM. And if you're not replacing something outside of its warranty period, yeah, it may, you may be only paying 90 bucks for a new one, whereas this is like 250. Yeah, you may pay more up front, but that will last 10 times longer than the aftermarket one, which you'll be putting in one every year or two years. So in the long run of the vehicle, unless you're just getting selling it, then yeah, but we put aftermarket in it. But I don't sell my vehicles. The next destination of my cars is the junkyard, which I have no problem putting money in. Like this, this car here needs a transmission. It's slipping after about four hours of driving. We know it is. We're not gonna check it out. The car has been great. It's been super reliable. It's actually the one reliable car we do own. And the funny thing is this car has a lot of miles on it. So we check, let's open up this door. Look at that. So we have, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can get closer. Turn the car on. Oh, hood open. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, let's go here. 355,377. So we put a lot of kilometers on our cars. We do a lot of highway driving, so they need to survive. I'm also a stickler for maintenance. I do everything the owner's manual does minus 10%. So when it says the transmission service on this car has to be done every 50,000, I do it every 40,000. Every third oil change we do, I do the transmission. Cause it's literally, it's six liters of fluid. Yeah, it may cost 60 bucks, but knowing that your transmission is gonna last a really long time, it's fine. And the fact that this is a clutch base, anyone who knows what a Mac is, they have clutch packs in them. They are going to die. Transmissions don't last forever. They are going to die eventually. You can prolong their life, but they are going to wear out. This one is just wearing out. 400,000 kilometers, it will probably need a transmission. And we will do it. We'll put a tranny in it. It won't be a big deal. We'll probably have that car for the next 10 years. Same as a Jeep, we'll have it for the rest of its life. But, on to the point of the story. We're here to remove a transmission. That's what we're gonna do. Battery's fully charged so we can have some music playing. Cause, uh, yeah, why not? And uh, let's start ripping this bitch apart and get that flex plate out. Investigate what went wrong. See if we can repair it. And if we can't, then we have to order new flex plates, which would take about a week to get here. Uh, unless we can find one used locally. Uh, new, try finding one. There's none out here. Rock Auto is gonna be our only distributor that we can get one through. Uh, dealership doesn't have it, Napa doesn't have it, Bumper to Bumper doesn't have it, Lorco doesn't have it. Um, every part shop we call pretty much doesn't have a flex plate, so. And that's in all of BC and Alberta. So Rock Auto is going to be our friend here. But yeah, let's get started on this uh, and have some fun. See you in a bit. Alright, whatever Jeep engineer thought these would be quick release, I'm going to punch you in the dick. Quick release my balls and they're tight as fuck. Anytime, buddy guy. All right, so we're getting started to rip this bitch out. We got everything out, I think. 
Okay, but transmission lines are off. All the connections are unplugged. Transfer case oh, unplugged. Oh, nope, this one. Yeah, no, that's unplugged. Yeah, everything, linkages are all undone. So this is the big bad bitch. We're moving out. Warning, if you've never done this before, this thing is about 600 pounds to 800 pounds. It will try to kill you. Please don't leave your dog under the truck. Yeah, don't have your dog underneath the truck. <laughs> like, that's probably not a wise idea. Chelsea, get over here. What? What? Chelsea wants to join us underneath here because she's like, I'm a dog. I want to join. She's a people dog. All right, so pretty much the ordeal what's going to happen here is, well, if you're going to do it with your girlfriend, the probably your best bet is to uh, tell her to fuck off and get someone who knows what you're doing. Yeah, that'd probably be the best bet. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to grab the transfer case. She's going to mess with the bow housing until we get it close to here. The exhaust is going to hold it. Um, so and then advise that for future reference because if you got a rusty exhaust, it's most likely not going to hold. Yeah, you can remove the exhaust if you want to, but I would recommend not doing it and I would also recommend putting straps in if you're just going to leave the transmission hanging. Speaking of straps, shouldn't we do that to brace both ends? No, because I want to take transmission out. You want to drop it completely? Yeah, so it's going to be some finicky and fucking that. around, but pretty much what my goal is here on the transfer case is to try to counteract the balance on the bell housing. Hers is to pull or to push and all this other jazz. Yes. So pretty much crawl, crawl around and get in your assumed positions. Okay, so there's that. So the transmission's already starting to come off. So either you're gonna watch this and it's gonna go either pretty smooth or it's gonna go tragically horribly. Or we just won't upload this video if it goes horribly. Yeah. FYI, I would highly recommend a transmission jack for this. Um, it's a lot better and you should probably get out of the kill zone. Well, I gotta try to get the slice plate off. No, that's what's big about it. I need the pry bar behind you. So it's not pry bar, it's called a flathead. Well, it's a giant flathead that we're using as a pry bar. Probably should have invested in pry bar, eh? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so the transmission pretty much is already off. The issue is it's on the bow housing. It's locked at top of the Because it's off in the, it's off of the alignment dowels. So, so it's just hung up on the uh, flex plate. So, we just, oh, there you go. There she goes. We're just counteracting the balance here from my end, using the jack to do everything else. Okay. She's gonna You're probably it. hung up on the top of the housing. Leave your fat ass. Oh, oh, I need to get in line here. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, that's about all the room we've got here. It Cause... needs to go straight back while it's high. There you go. Can you just pull it back? Uh, no. I ain't stuck on something. Oh, yeah. why is there transmission fluid coming up the bell housing? Uh oh. That's not okay. That's fine. That's never happened before. Don't sweat it. I think we're gonna have to remove the exhaust. Nope. I think that's what's gonna happen. We got it past it yesterday. Well, I'm fighting the bell housing and I'm maxed out down You're here. fighting this pin right here. Okay, I'll take the pin out. You got the flathead. Yeah, you didn't take this off the Jeep. It did, it just came back on. This one? Here, I'll show you how to do this. So you put a screwdriver here, and uh -huh. you just go. Oh, you gotta get inside here. Come on now, just... Oh. Disconnect it. Coming up, why is there a lot of transmission fluid coming out of this? Well, one or two things. I think we fucked the transmission. I think the torque plate might be just pissing out its life. <laughs> or a seal one. Oh, I'll grab my bucket. That's never happened before. Yeah, just so you guys know, that's not supposed to happen. So it means that we blew the transmission uh, front seal. Or... I don't know. <laughs> Might as well put it on the ground. I don't want to put it in the puddle, that's why. Hold on. You're not even catching it. I love that. I know. It's, just, it's, it it's just gotta sit there. That has never happened before. So something's up. So good thing we're dropping this trance to see what went bang. Something definitely died. So it looks like we do have to drop the exhaust because I don't think... Do we have enough transmission fluid for a change? 
It's 14 liters for our entire transmission. Do we fluid. have enough transmission fluid? So I don't care how much there is. Do we have enough? Yes. <clears throat> if we have to buy more, we will. Didn't we buy it from my work? Yeah, well that's fine. There's a dealership close by. Not for the same freaking price. Well, no, you want to pull your price and go back to your dealership. I tell your parents to pick it up on their way out. They're coming out here in six days. No, well, it's ATF plus four, so we'll put mostly Mopar stuff back in, then we'll just top it up with that. Good thing we're taking the transmission all the way out this time. Yeah, figure out what's going on. All right, cool. You might as well jack that up a little bit so she angles out and fucking drains. <laughs> So we don't Actually, know that's slowing down, I think. Put it back down. That's not the T-case. That's too much fluid to be the T-case. Transmission. Yeah. Transmission holds 14 liters in this. It's that is uh, the, I think, you cracked your torque converter. This torque converter holds about four liters of uh, transmission fluid. So I need a new torque converter. Well, we'll see when we get the tranny out. Hey anyway, guys, so we're gonna get the exhaust dropped just to make this easy on ourselves, and then we're also gonna find out what's going on. And we're gonna get tear it into this and see. I I think the flex plate was incorrect uh, by uh, by the looks of things. It's starting to look like it was the wrong size, which is really really rare, but it does happen when we go to aftermarket. I just thought, will Rock Auto give you a new torque converter because their, their, their wrong flex plate killed it? Uh, who knows? <laughs> I'm going to have a quick yander up here and see what's what. I don't think you can see Okay, so it's not yet. the torque converter. Um, we did something really stupid. Hand me the camera. Thank you. So, we we made a mistake. Uh oh. We will own the mistake. Make sure you remove the torque converter bolts out of the transmission before trying to remove the transmission or you're going to pull the torque converter with it, which is now currently pissing out fluid. So oh, those four bolts. Yeah, so now we have to spin those four bolts off and then take torque converter off. We have to drop trans, put torque converter back on. Put the Nothing's back broken. We don't need to replace anything. It just came off and they do come apart. It's normal. It's on a shaft right now, which is why it's fighting us. Okay. So we just forgot four bolts. It happens, no big deal. But now we know what it is. So we're gonna get these bolts off and then we'll come back to you guys when we start pulling this trans again once this thing stops bleeding. So see you soon. The bucket. It's pointing now where we need it to point down. Are you sure? Cause that looks like it's pointing at the, like, All right. the jack. We already make the mess, so we'll, we'll clean that up after. You can hear us. I know you can't see us very well cause he's shitty at camera angles. I'm sorry, I'm not a porn star. There you go. I don't know, higher. Is that the no? no I have, that's I have pointing, my white that's lens. That's pointing on. right here. No, I have my white lens on. Okay. It should pick it up. Anyways, there you go. That's better. Towards me a little I'm, bit. I'm, I'm, you, you're, you're, you're over here. You're pointing at the bracket. Point who, towards me. Who, who do you think you are? Light bright? You're not that hot. I'm fucking sexy, man. <laughs> Just careful of the angle of being down here. My tits might hang out. Okay. Okay. Let's pull this back now. There you go. Alright. That's separated from the torque converter now. Holy fuck. Do, 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 do. Lots more fluid on the floor. Okay. So, oh, come on. Fuck off. Keep this between the legs, I guess. Uh, the exhaust needs to be pulled down. Yep. It's stuck between the hook and the exhaust. You gotta push. I know, I'm working on it. You gotta pull backwards. I'm trying. I'm giving her all she got, Captain. <laughs> no, the exhaust has to come off. I'm stuck in the housing in between the exhaust. So you need to somehow pull the exhaust down without pushing against the bell housing. Should be able to. Well then use your fit. Hands in the way of this thing. Okay, I'm gonna jiggle it and wiggle it. Let's see if it should come. I hate this trans. You just need, hold on, hold on. Give me two seconds. What? Where's the dust cover from the flex plate? No, 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 I don't want to damage that. Okay, well then, hold on, give me two seconds.
She's stuck between the exhaust. She needs to take the exhaust off. No, I don't. Come on, give me a mat. You're not listening to me. Let me find something. Give me a second. She's trying to find something. <laughs> Instead of taking off two bolts, she wants to do all this extra work. Well, I got a welder. No. What are you doing? <laughs> Something to guide it between it. That's adorable. <laughs> try. Let's try this. Okay, take this down a little further. Slowly drop this down. Pump that up so we get out of our way here. Okay, watch out. Yeah. Oh. She'll come down that way. Oh yeah, she definitely will. Alright, she weighs a fucking ton, my lassie. I got a lot of teeth te te loose. I also on the need to do something over here, please. I what? need that flathead. Like ASAP. For our rifter transfer case to pieces. Fucking bracket reconnected itself. Fucking den. That was never disconnected. It was. You did not have that disconnected. Alright. That's oh. why I asked you. Fuck off, Granny. Do you need a hand over there? No. It doesn't weigh too much. It's just awkward. That's all it is. That's the whole issue with this transmission. It's fucking awkward. Well, the tea case is about to fall on you, so... That's fine. I didn't want to have kids anyways. Alright, it'll pop it off over here, I guess. They call me, I should be a clown. That's how much I'm juggling. Come on. Be a bad bitch. Let's go. Oh. You're gonna be that, eh? Fucking asshole. Put, put it down, not up. Uh, that's not gonna go in very well. I'd put it from the top. She's almost out. Thank you, yeah. you fucking dink. Fucking ass. All right, let's uh, boot kick this fucking jack back over here, shall we? Thank you. There. Oh, for fuck's sake. What'd you do? Jack stood straight up. Fucking cockard strong now. Ugh. Thank you. Alright, that's uh... Try to wiggle this out again. You wanna push this jack? I gotta pull this down. Okay, well I guess I have to do everything. Okay. Um, I can try. Just gotta kick this jack. We should, you know what we should do? We should wrap a, rat, a ratchet around the tea case and just slowly pull it backwards with a ratchet at a time. A click at a time? Yeah. Tie it to the rear axle. No, because it's making contact with the top and the, that exhaust has to come off. There's no way it's coming out without that exhaust coming off. Period. You have to take that exhaust off. Sorry, right, buddy. Tackle your bolts. I'll jack this up. We gotta soon. figure out how to take that off. I don't know. Thunder thighs. You Here wanna, they come. You want a two be continued and we'll. Look, hon. I'm from the 60s. <laughs> okay, is it tight? Bob Ross. Is it tight? Yeah. It's tight. Look, the tea case is against there. Just give it a minute. Bob Ross would be proud. Deputy 40 those bolts for a few minutes. I gotta get this tea case loaded off. All right, she's apparently bitching about fluid, I'm so burning. we're gonna get going. Uh, we have to take the exhaust off. Told her that in the first place, but she didn't want to do it. Well, so, you should do it, not listen. Anyhow, like I said, we gotta get these bolts off. Yeah. Do you want me to help you pull that? Nope, back? Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Okay. All right, so we got her out. Transfer case, transmission, bell housing. It may shock you some people, but this is the transmission right here. This is it. This little bit right here. That's just the bell housing, the little turret converter, 
from here to here is all transfer case. So the thing only weighs like a hundred pounds with the transmission itself. But you want to show them what the torque converter is? Yeah. So there's the torque converter. We had a gander at her. We had a look. There's no damage to anything. Those seals broke or nothing. So it just came out loose. Um, I'm probably gonna drain this into a bucket and then I'm gonna refill it and then reinstall it because how often do you get to freaking change the fluid inside of your uh, torque converter? So we're gonna do it. We already saw the damage. That is uh, the problem on the trans on the uh, flex plate. Um, so we're gonna easily fix that. Uh, hopefully the only thing that's gonna stop us from starting this Jeep today is gonna be if the uh, crank position sensor is just done. So we're gonna get here. Ugh. We got a big mess under here. We're probably gonna push the Jeep out to clean it up. So there's our flex plate. That's a big giant thing that every Jeep owner hates. Let me make sure you guys can see it. There we go. Um, as you could probably see, uh, where is it? I think it might be this side right here. Uh, you probably can't see it, but there's a. It's bent um, in the little square from when we were torquing it on. I wasn't aware that uh, those squares were timing. Uh, I, I don't drive an automatic vehicle Jeep wise. I always drove a manual. So we don't have fucking flex plates. We have f flywheels. We don't have to worry about that crap. But uh, it's on there. It's torqued. I'm going to see if I can fix the transmission uh, flex plate on the Jeep. And then we'll slide the Jeep back together and go from there. I might get my wife to actually uh, get this under here with a wire brush so she can undercoat her Jeep because it's a great opportunity to get underneath your Jeep and protect it and do some maintenance under it. And uh, it looks like the undercoating held up pretty well. Uh, it's just dirty. So you can get under here with a rag and clean it up a little bit. And I also might get her to remove the manifold so we can fix the crack and weld it back together. Since we have the weekend, we know what the problem is with the flex plates. So that's not hard for us to fix. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Other than that, uh, I'm going to get myself up here and I'm going to take five minutes because that was a nightmare and we're going to clean up this engine, this uh, garage and make sure we don't leave a huge mess because we don't want to do that. So we're going to go do that now and we'll see you guys back here in about, to you will be a second, for me it'll be about 10-15 minutes. So right back. Better pause that for you. Okay, right. So we got the flex paid off. Um, compared to the other one, <clears throat> it's matches in some sense. Um, this is the old one right here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the crack on that, but she's, uh, she is donezo. So, compare the teeth, they're fine. There's, I count every fucking tooth, everything matches up in a sense. So, the issue that we found, at least here, uh, I had to grind. Uh, where is it? This one here. So this was the one that was making contact with the uh, The crank position sensor. So we ground that down flush and made it level with the rest of them uh, Check for roundness. This thing's not round um, I don't know what world they are, but they clearly weld it uh, Too fast it Happens I was tempted to put more welds on this but then I realized that the welds in this is pretty like some of them were eh, But nothing, okay, like like this one here is kind of eh. Same with this one. Same with this one. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's eh. That one's good. That one's good. These are eh. I'm saying eh because there's so little contact with this plate compared to the ring. Um, either way, it's in there. I've never had one crack the welds, so it should be good enough. But this one, <clears throat> well, this was the old one. And uh, so they're made by two different people. This is a used one. Uh, this was a, a Mopar part that we took out of it. Cause when we installed the used one, uh, we got the used one off a Jeep and uh, it was a Mopar part. So that's the Mopar OEM one. This is a Mexican uh, aftermarket. So hopefully this goes in fine now. Hopefully this bolts up and hopefully this Jeep fires correctly. Um, I got to figure out a way if there's a way to start this Jeep without needing, um, 
pretty much without me requiring to install the transmission. Now I got some ideas what I can do, but I want to start the Jeep, even though it's like no exhaust on it right now, so it's gonna be louder than hell. Um, I want to get it there. And this thing's tuned a little bit, so it might shoot flame. So come on. Yeah, here. Camera's dirty. Sorry about the dirt. Hopefully it doesn't focus on it. That doesn't seem to be. So um I would really hate to get the transmission back in to find out I need to replace that flex plate and the crank positioning sensor. I don't think I'll need to replace it. It looks like it's good, but we'll see if we can get it fired without requiring us to install the flex plate. I might just have to hold it there where it sits, where it sits on the factory position. And then hopefully it counts the teeth and then it goes Whoa, and fires up to life and just idles perfectly, which would be excellent. But it might not, we don't know. So. And if I have to put the trans in, then I'll have to put the trans in. And eventually I'm going to be able to drop the trans in this in about a half hour because I'm down to an hour now. So the big fucky around part is just getting it out of the position and putting it in. So, by the way, if you guys are doing this job, I recommend picking up a rear main seal. This is the perfect time to change your rear main seal if you needed to do it um, because straight up, it's there it's, so this is pretty much the same procedure you'd have to do to change it anyway so you might as well just do it now now we're going to get this flex plate in installed hopefully we can get the jeep started without it needing the transmission and we'll go from there bye all right she's done so for those who don't know oh, let's get underneath this thing so that there i'll give you the secret to how to do it if you can't take off your uh harmonic balancers not take it off but uh say that you're missing the bolt like this thing is and you can't lock it down i'll give you the secret to do it do not put a screwdriver through here you will have nothing but fucking problems trust me learning this the hard way grab a bolt one of your transmission bolts slide it in here make sure it's not going through the hole that you're going to put a screw through but put it in there put a bolt up here that e torques change it out but put it up here and then you can torque and undo this by putting the nut down here or by putting it in here and you can torque and untorque it without messing anything up makes it super simple for you guys but if you ever want to know what all my transmission flex plates look like here you go this is what it looks like if you guys have ever seen behind a jeep in this sense if you own a jeep you will eventually have to replace these um, because they're pieces of garbage and a lot of people crack the flex plate without realizing what the corporate is. The reason why these things break is because of one, the transmission mount that's usually in this area. I, I probably have it on the ground somewhere, but there's a transmission mount that holds the transfer case and everything else where this big bracket is that usually is here um, and motor mounts. If you have bad motor mounts, you will crack the flex plate. So, for those who want to know, it's cheaper to replace the motor mount every three or four years or keep an eye on them than it is to have um, your flex plate crack. Now, here's another thing. Don't, and this may sound crazy, you get a lot of people on there recommending these heavy duty steel ones. Don't buy those. You'll crack your flex plate every year. Um, I've dealt with that on another Jeep. They're horrible. Go to Rock Auto or go to your local parts store, buy an all rubber one, or even better, get a polyester one. I think it's polyester, poly, or no, polyurethane or something like that. They're, they're these, these things. Let me make sure I got the camera on so you can see. You probably can see that for dick. Um, here, this one. So there's red down here, and uh, that's a that's a poly bolt, like poly bushing I've upgraded on this one here. The lift kit came with these black rubber ones, but they were trash, and uh, there's a lot of work going to be done to this Jeep. Like one of these stock up the control arms, they're getting the boot, and uh, we're probably going to make this a long arm kit Jeep with uh, coilovers front and rear. We don't know what we want to do yet. I know we're keeping it rustic and correct, very correct on the outside, so it's going to have to wood paneling and everything else like that. But it's going to be repaired um, in a sense of mechanically. Diffs are supposed to be done yesterday. I'm pretty chapped at the fact that we weren't, this thing just decided to die yesterday pretty much. We did the flex plate, it started, no problem at all. And we were clicking, 
And we're like, okay, something's not right. So we inspected everything. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. We started it and watched the flex plate. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. And then the Jeep died. And the crank position sensor is the error code or pretty much the code that we determined it was. So we bought a new one. Didn't start. We didn't start it again. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? I was pulling my hair out. And then it did fire, but it ran hella rough. So under further investigation, I put a flathead screwdriver, something like this, and listened. People don't know this trick. If you have some vibrating, you can't hear it. Do that. It'll transfer the noise through and you'll hear it. Build the pinpoint where it is. That's how I learned the flex plate cracked and not the oil pan during cylinder six. So I determined that it was a flex plate issue. And, uh, but anyhow, we found out it was the crank positioning sensor making contact with the flex plate. And uh, it rides pretty close. But um, yeah, we didn't know it would be that close. We're like, we're talking a mil, maybe two mil of space. And I uh, had to go in there and grind it down to fix it. So hopefully this just fixes our problem. If it doesn't, I am sending it to a shop and I'm just gonna have them do it because it's not that I can't do it. It's not that I have the skill to do it. It's that I don't wanna do it. <laughs> they want a thousand bucks to change this flex plate and that includes a new one. And so in my opinion, that also includes fluid for the transmission. So you know what, if that's what, if they want a thousand bucks for it, they can be my guess. I, I'm done doing this. <laughs> like this is the last time. And I told uh, my girlfriend, I said, I'm never doing this again. I'm gonna keep an eye on those motor mounts. I'm, if it does happens again, it's either gonna get a manual swap or it's just gonna go to another shop to get that dealt with. Um, anyways, I'm gonna get everything cleaned up here, get it ready for the transmission we put in. All right, yeah, I do. Okay. So we got everything done. Everything's back together now. We're just double checking, tightening everything. And we're gonna see if this Jeep starts. So we don't know if it will or will not, but uh, we'll know in about 30 seconds what's gonna happen here. It's either gonna fire in a blaze of glory or it's getting trailered to a shot. All right, we had a scare of the bolt. It was just the bolt I was using to uh, Test the to torque the uh, flex plate on. It's not It's not an extra bolt. Well, it's an extra bolt, but it's not belonging to this Jeep. It belongs to my YJ. So we'll see if this bitch turns on. Yes. Transmission lines leaking. 
Yes, I understand that, Steven. It starts, it moves. Nothing dripped on the ground. No more clicking, no more drips. That's good. I don't know what's burning off the exhaust. Uh, everything. Um, It's just uh, brake clean and trans fluid and stuff. We soaked that exhaust in trash. Well, I'm just making sure it keeps leaking, which I don't know. Well, you'd see it on the ground if it was. I think so, no. All right. There was a little bit at the end of... Genie. Yeah, I wish I had brake clean, because I'd clean that off to fucking know. Oh, it's fine. It'll burn off. So Genie is good to go. So tomorrow. Yes, we are ordering Mopar ones down in Vancouver. I'm not going to have Jerry rig transmission. Okay. So I'm not going to have Jerry rigged uh, transmission line set up on this car. I'm going to go down to Mopar and pick up some proper transmission lines because we had to take them off for the quick disconnect so we missed some plastic pieces and we used whatever we could find around the house to make it work so we did and uh i can tell you right now if this ever happens again i i am not working on it okay i think so just about ready to go straight back I, get us out of here and get rid of the smell okay close the hood we're gonna start her back up and take for a quick test drive Take everything off the dash. She started. That's the scariest part, was getting it started. Yeah, she hesitated for a minute because we pretty much had the, when we did the header, we drained the fuel line. So she took a minute to get fuel to her, but she got fuel to her. And all there's working good. We have 14 volts or 14.3 volts. Uh, we had good oil pressure, everything. So. You know what's funny? Since we fixed our exhaust leak, your engine properly idles. <laughs> oh. What's that noise? Do you hear it? Listen. Is that your exhaust vibrating? Nope. Just put your shoe up against the exhaust and see if it stops making that noise. Or is it just shit in the interior? I don't know. smoke coming out of the side so we're gonna keep an eye on it and make sure that all burns off without having a fire we'll get the hose ready just in case and we'll get back to you right away bye bye all right guys the Jeep's done the transmission's fixed we got done test drive I know it's a little bit later than I expected um, just happened to get the Jeep ready because tomorrow morning it's leaving to go get gears done and uh, yeah so I need to make sure everything is tipped off so it's full of gas we do have a small transmission leak. It's a drip. Um, I'll show you now. I don't know if you guys feel to see under there, but there's a bit of wet floor. Uh, it's a very slow drip. I bet you if I shoved some RTV into the piece, it wouldn't drip. But either way, it's ATF plus four. It's cheap. So it's a low drip. It's not a big deal to me. Um, transmission's full. So we're good. And we have an extra liter of Mopar ATF plus four. Now, I use only OEM fuel fluid in uh, transmissions because I just don't want to fix it. So um, it's not expensive for me though. Five liter jug is forty one dollars from Mopar. So because my girlfriend works for Chrysler, 
So employee and pricing, if you ever wonder why I have a lot of Jeeps and Ram trucks and things like that, as you'll see, hopefully in the future when we get all of our vehicles here, um, that's the reason why we like Chrysler vehicles is because we get parts for cheap. Um, OEM parts of all things. Um, it'd be the same thing if she worked for Chevy or Ford, like one of those two things. That's the thing right now I'm having a discussion with myself is do I want a brand new F-150 or do I want to get a brand new Ram 1500? Now, maybe down in the comment section, you guys can help me out with that. Um, uh, Ram 1500, 3.49% interest, 96 months, or 5.99% interest over 96 months for an F-150, but the F-150 is $10,000 cheaper. I don't know, I have to do the math. They about equal up the same. Um, the Ram's more expensive, but a lot more options, but whatever, it is what it is. So Jeep's good to go. She's running. Uh, we're gonna order some parts. We need to replace our speedo cable. Or not the speedo cable, the uh, accelerator pedal cable. Um, this, the plastic piece broke and it idles really high. We fixed it with duct tape. Handyman secret weapon. As uh, Red Green always say. Women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. It runs fine. I, that duct tape will probably last two years to what it is. But uh, we're gonna get down to the coast. Get some gears on this thing so it stops uh, driving 100 at 1800 RPM and where the Jeep's not happy to run at and happens to boil the transmission fluid over when you're towing. So it's going to 410 gears. We're uh, still haven't quite made a decision on lockers or limited slip, but the guy said he'll show us a few things down there and we'll make that decision when we get down there. Uh, we definitely are going to time lapse that, so stick around for that one. And then uh, after that, we're ordering our parts list. Should cost us about 800 bucks for the parts we need for this and this. So this is the next step up. But anyhow, we're gonna let you guys go. We're gonna jump on the road here in about four hours. I'm probably not gonna go to sleep tonight because if we're leaving 0600. It's uh, 0200 right now. So uh, we're probably gonna get on the road here and get going. But anyway guys, hope you enjoy the vlog. Uh, just another day in the life of a Jeep owner. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.